forklifts. We use them every day. They can be used to raise, lower, carry, stack, and push objects in a variety of settings. Ultimately, each will make your job easier. To help us use these machines safely, OSHA created the Power Industrial Truck Standard. One of the most significant parts of these regulations deals with training. Before you can use any type of powered industrial truck, OSHA requires that you be fully trained, evaluated, and certified by a competent instructor. Your certification process will include formal instruction and interactive discussion on safe operating procedures, practical training on the type of forklift to be used, and a comprehensive evaluation of the operator's performance in the workplace. Powered industrial operators must be giving refresher training and evaluation if observed to be operating in an unsafe manner, involved in an accident or near miss, determined to need retraining by management, called upon to operate a different type of powered industrial truck, or to operate under changed workplace conditions. Operators must be retrained every three years according to the standard to ensure retention of operator knowledge and skill. There are many types of forklifts, with the most common being counterbalance and narrow aisle. These vehicles are specifically designed for indoor or outdoor use depending on their size, type of tires, load capacities, and working environment. Counterbalance forklifts are generally used in heavy construction, shipyards, loading terminals, and warehouses. Narrow aisle forklifts, or loaders, are indoor vehicles. These forklifts are often used when lifting requirements are less demanding and in areas where the aisle space is limited, such as warehouses or retail stores. Always wear appropriate personal protective equipment. This may include hard hat, safety glasses, and steel toe boots. Seat belts must be worn during forklift operation. Before entering the vehicle, clean and dry your hands to prevent slipping when grabbing the handhold. Check your shoes for grease and never hold onto the steering wheel when entering the forklift. Always watch your footing as well as your head when mounting or dismounting the vehicle. Keep your arms and legs inside of the vehicle at all times and obey posted speed limit signs. Forklift operators must complete a formal, documented pre-shift safety inspection before operating the vehicle for the first time on each shift. Physical operating conditions will change throughout each day as well as between each shift. Pre-use inspections will identify potential hazards that may be encountered from a damaged forklift. Inspect the mast for broken or cracked weld points and any other obvious damage. Make sure roller tracks are greased and the chains are free to travel. Make sure the forks are equally spaced and free from cracks along the blade and at the heels. Check the hydraulic fluid levels. Check the hydraulic line and fitting for excessive wear or crimping. Look at the lift and tilt cylinders for any damage or fluid leakage. Inspect mounting hardware on cylinders and make sure everything is secure. Check tires for excessive wear, splitting or missing tire material. If you're operating on pneumatic tires, check them for the proper pressure indicated on the tire. Forklifts are powered by batteries, gasoline, diesel, and propane. If you find a problem, never attempt to fix it yourself. Report any problems to your supervisor and let a qualified mechanic perform any repairs. Battery power. Working around batteries can be dangerous because they contain acid. Wear goggles or a face shield with safety glasses, gloves, and an apron when watering the battery. Batteries being charged produce flammable hydrogen gas. Be sure you charge in a well-ventilated area and keep all ignition sources at least 25 feet away. Know the location and operation of the closest eye wash station. Do not attempt to change a battery unless you have been trained and authorized to do so and have the necessary equipment. Check batteries for cracks or holes, frayed cables, broken insulation, securely sealed cells, clogged vent caps, and tight connections. Gasoline and diesel. 
Park the vehicle in a safe location away from ignition sources and turn off the vehicle. Wear safety glasses while refueling. Be sure that you are using the correct fuel and do not attempt to refuel the vehicle unless you are trained and authorized to do so. If the forklift is powered by propane, inspect the tank for cracks, broken weld points, and other damage. Make sure all valves, nozzles, and hoses are secure and do not leak. Whenever handling a propane tank, do it outside, away from the building and other workers. Smoking, open flames, and hot water are never allowed around propane tanks. Always have a fire extinguisher nearby. After the initial pre-operation inspection, forklift operators must then conduct what OSHA calls an operational inspection. The difference now is the engine is running. You are now ready to start the forklift. Put on your seatbelt. Pump the brakes. Check the steering by turning the wheel left and right. Inspect the lights. Raise, lower, and tilt the forks. View the lamps and gauges for proper levels. And honk the horn. You'll want to make sure each is working properly. Always be aware of the possibility of overheating, leaking, or a mechanical breakdown. Should any of these occur, the forklift should be removed from service and repaired by authorized personnel. And remember, forklift inspection must be completed daily. If you're operating a truck that's used around the clock, don't assume that the next driver will catch problems with the truck that developed while you were using it. Inspect it at the end of your shift as well. That way, you won't leave any dangerous surprises for your coworkers. One of the most important things to know about a forklift is the rating capacity. Every forklift is given a data plate from the manufacturer before it can be placed into service. The data plate contains important information about the safe working capabilities of the forklift and with special attachments. It is important to know how much a load weighs before you can move it. Always remember, adding certain attachments may change the weight capacity. Now that you have inspected your forklift and determined it's safe to use, let's turn our attention towards lifting and moving your load from one place to another. To pick up a load, square up on the center of the load and approach it straight on with the forks in the traveling position. Stop when the tips of the forklift are about a foot away from the load. Level the forks and slowly drive forward until the load is resting against the backrest. Lift the load high enough to clear whatever may be under it. Look over both shoulders to make sure you're clear to back out about a foot. Carefully tilt the mass back to stabilize the load. To put down the load, drive safely up to the location. Square up and stop about a foot away. Level the forks and then drive the rest of the way in. Now the load can be lowered to the floor. To make sure the load will not be hooked when backing out, tilt the forks slightly forward. Look over both shoulders and then back straight out until the forks have cleared the pallet. To stack one load on top of another, approach the load slowly and squarely. Stop about a foot away from the loading area and lift the mast high enough to clear the top of the stack. Slowly move forward until the load is square over the top. Level the forks and lower the mast until the load is no longer supported by the forks. Look over both shoulders and slowly back straight out. Never lift a load while moving. Always wait until you're in the loading area and come to a complete stop before raising the mast. Be sure the top load sits squarely on the stack. If the load is slightly off, the whole stack could tip over. Follow these safe driving tips. Always travel with the load tilted slightly back for added stability. Travel with the load at a proper height. A stable clearance height is about four to six inches at the tips and two inches at the heels to clear most uneven surfaces. Never speed or use excessive maneuvering. If you're unable to see over the load, drive in reverse. Never try to look around a load. Turning a forklift will require a little more concentration than driving a car because it steers from the rear and handles very differently from a car or other roadway vehicles. The back end of the forklift swings wide and can injure coworkers or damage products and equipment. Think of the drive wheels as a pivot point. When turning, the back of the forklift makes a circle around the front. Never make a turn at a normal traveling speed. Always slow down to maintain balance. When turning into an aisle, stay wide in order for the load to clear the sides and the forklift to square up with its destination. 
When backing out of an aisle, allow enough room for the forks to clear the sides before starting a turn. When leaving a forklift unattended for any reason, always lower the mass completely, tilt the fork slightly forward, turn off the engine, and set the brake. Not every forklift job is in a warehouse with a smooth, flat floor. This section explains how to operate a forklift on slippery surfaces, around obstacles, and in congested areas, in addition to the safe methods for driving a forklift on loading docks, ramps, and in trailers. Forklift tires are not designed to handle traction problems. Skidding and sliding can easily happen when the surface is not clean, dry, and free of debris. Always watch for and avoid spills or objects that are in the way. If you must drive a forklift on a slippery surface, slow down, apply the brakes carefully, and make wide turns. Be aware of overhead clearances in all work areas, as many industrial areas have low overhead clearances, and know the height and mast of the overhead guard on the forklift. Narrow aisles and tight turning areas can present problems for forklifts. When in a tight spot, try moving empty forks to one side and steer to maximize turning angles. When working in busy pedestrian areas and where other vehicles are operating requires added caution. Pedestrians always have the right of way. Never pick up or set down a load when people are standing close by. Be careful when working around other operators in congested areas. Obey all traffic rules and signs. Always remember that traffic rules and warning signs are designed to keep you and coworkers safe. Always blow the horn when approaching blind corners, doorways, or aisles to let other operators and pedestrians know that you are there. Use corner mirrors when possible. Never exceed a safe working speed above five miles per hour and always slow down in congested areas. Always keep a safe distance from other forklifts. A recommended distance is three truck lengths. Never pass another forklift at intersections or blind spots. Always look over both shoulders before backing up. Never allow anyone to stand or ride on the forks or use them as an elevator to lift someone. Never carry people from one place to another. Uneven surfaces or debris can result in a sudden jolt which may cause you to lose control of the load. Be aware of holes, sand, gravel, spilled lubricants, and water puddles all potential causes of damage and injury. Always approach railroad tracks at a 45 degree angle to prevent you from running over serious bumps or jamming the forks into the rails. Most industrial facilities have loading and unloading areas where the forklifts may run into trouble if the driver is not careful. Always check to make sure the bridge or dock plate is secure and can hold the weight of a fully loaded forklift. Always check that the wheels of the truck or rail car are chocked and secure. Always drive straight onto the bridge plates and never accelerate when doing so. And always drive at a steady speed to avoid skidding. Before beginning to work inside a trailer, check for flooring that is loose or soft. A trailer in this condition probably cannot hold a loaded forklift. Use additional trailer supports if the weight of the loaded forklift is too heavy for the trailers. Always make sure the height of the trailer is sufficient before driving into it. Make sure the trailer is completely backed up and squared to the loading dock. Be sure the trailer wheels are locked or the dock lock is engaged to prevent movement of the trailer and use dock lights or headlights if you work inside a dark trailer. Driving on ramps can be very hazardous if the driver does not practice smart driving techniques. If the forklift is loaded, always travel forward up a ramp. When approaching the start of a ramp, raise the fork slightly to avoid hitting or scraping the ramp surface. When the forklift is loaded, always drive in reverse down a ramp and look over your shoulder. When the forklift is empty, drive in reverse up a ramp and forward when you come down a ramp. A single person should be posted to help when maneuvering on a ramp. Only one forklift at a time should be on a ramp. And travel at a slow, steady speed. Never try to turn on a ramp because the weight of the forklift may cause it to turn over. There are primarily two kinds of accidents that can happen when driving a forklift. A lateral tip over and a longitudinal turnover. A lateral tip over happens when a forklift rolls over on its side. It is usually caused by maneuvering with a load too high or by driving over debris. 
longitudinal turnovers occur when the forklift falls between a loading dock and a trailer. This can happen when the wheels of the trailer are not chalked properly, the bridge or dock plate is not properly placed, or the truck driver pulls away from the loading dock while the forklift is inside. Anytime you are 25 feet from the truck or it is out of your view, you must shut it down. To shut down a truck, do the following. Select a level in solid surface. Park in a safe area, not blocking exits, aisles, fire extinguishers, emergency equipment, or electrical equipment. Never park on a grade unless chocks are used. Lower the load, forks, load engagement means to the floor and tilt the mass forward. Follow the truck procedures to set the brakes and turn the vehicle off. A forklift can only be operated by trained personnel. Never let someone who is not qualified drive the forklift. Always wear a seatbelt. When vision is blocked in front, drive in reverse or use a signal person. Always blow the horn when turning a corner, approaching someone from behind, or driving through congested areas. Let others know you are there. Always lift and lower loads slowly and smoothly, avoiding jerking motions. Never pick up a load on a broken pallet. Make sure the load is stable and will not shift during transport. Never exceed the rated capacity of a forklift. Never drive faster than the posted speed limit. Always keep arms and legs inside the forklift to prevent injuries. And always tell the supervisor if you are having any mechanical problems, even if they are minor, and let a qualified mechanic fix them. Forklifts are a valuable industrial tool that can cause serious injury and damage when not used properly. Operators need to be familiar with forklifts, understand their mechanical components, make sure that the equipment is in good condition, and always practice safe operating techniques. These skills will give you the confidence to do the job right.